dragging, loading, lifting, smashing, positioning, ditching, with tons of controlled power. These are but a few of the jobs performed by a machine called by a variety of names, depending on its assignment. Power shovel, backhoe, truck crane, drag line, magnet, pipeliner, grapple, yard crane, clamshell. But regardless of the descriptive title given to the machine, almost always this is the major piece of equipment on the job. That's because it so often sets the pace for its related team of men and other equipment. It so often determines the productivity or profitability of the entire enterprise. No wonder more than ordinary thought goes into choosing the right shovel crane. That's not just because a shovel crane is a capital investment. It's because, naturally, there is always one machine, one leader, that can outwork other rigs of the same class. And if this kind of equipment is so important to profits and production, then it's mighty important to pick the leader. Put yourself in the shoes of the men who must choose. These men do more than ask for catalog specifications and price. They ask solutions for problems like these, either by spoken word or oftentimes by a silent, unspoken question put to their own judgment. Questions like these are quite common to prospective purchasers in this business. Has that company been in the shovel crane business long enough to know what good design is and what I really need? Or, is the manufacturer financially solid enough to back up its good intentions? I certainly don't want my machine to be an orphan when I need a replacement part. I wonder if that rig is built right, or if they've just bought up most of the components and then sledged the parts together. What's the service setup? A lot of maintenance, along with idle trucks and men, can wipe out any difference in the first cost. Link Belt Speeder seeks the opportunity to answer such vital questions. And it has answers that forecast an extra measure of output or profit for the buyer who has those questions. That is why Link Belt Speeder Corporation now presents Extra Assets for Your Success. First, we should really tell why the name on the boom and on the counterweight is simply Link Belt and not Link Belt Speeder. Well, this identifies the name of the parent firm, Link Belt Company. The tie-up and a little history are especially meaningful because this too offers more evidence of extra assets for your success. Most everyone knows that Link Belt Speeder Corporation is a long-established shovel crane manufacturer. But its heritage in this business comes from two sources which combined offer an exceptionally helpful understanding of shovel cranes. The word speeder comes from the name which appeared on this sturdy old timer produced by the Speeder Machinery Corporation. That ancestor built its first excavator approximately 40 years ago. It became a subsidiary and a major part of Link Belt Company in 1939. And this old locomotive crane, in operation even today, is evidence that Link Belt has been in the shovel crane business since the century opened. Fact is, service and parts are being supplied for such Link Belt cranes bought back in 1903. And also for the first Link Belt crawler mounted rigs built in 1922. That, better than words, demonstrates how Link Belt protects the buyer's investment. Just to sense the scope of Link Belt, let's see a view of its 23 plants. They are located throughout the United States and the free world. And we hope you won't think us prideful if we mention that Link Belt is debt-free. 
and has never missed a dividend. This unbroken record goes back to 1875. Just about the best evidence any shovel crane buyer would want on that mighty important subject of financial stability. Why? Because it's so necessary, along with specialized interest, to assure proper design, manufacture, and continuous service of the shovel crane itself. Then, why should Link Belt, which offers over 50 product lines and major engineering services, have such intense interest in shovel cranes? The answer comes by quickly seeing a few Link Belt products and installations at work on materials handling and power transmission, which are also two prime functions of a shovel crane. Link Belt is a specialist in materials handling and power transmission and is one of the foremost suppliers of equipment in both fields, serving on tasks such as these and many, many more throughout industry. Yes, while a shovel crane is a highly specialized materials handler, look at those gears and clutches at work and think about the extent to which a shovel crane must also be thought of as a portable power transmission plant. Thus, it's easy for anyone to see that Link Belt's long-range interest in shovel cranes is both natural and deeply rooted on two major fronts of specialization, materials handling and power transmission. Now, how about traveling to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where we can inspect these offices and plant of the Link Belt Speeder Corporation. You shouldn't be surprised to find these extensive facilities in Cedar Rapids. That booming city has become one of the world's largest centers of construction equipment manufacturing. As we drive up to the Link Belt Speeder offices and plant, I invite you to put yourself in the shoes of those many shovel crane buyers who visit this manufacturing facility. A great number of them come here and enter this building to get the facts firsthand. Guests are always welcomed here as friends. Sure, every company has offices. But here, a special spirit becomes evident to everyone. You discover that these people, throughout these accounting, credit, purchasing, sales, production control, advertising, sales promotion, and other departments, really care. And that's probably because all departmental functions are tied to the same goal, guided by what is called the total marketing concept. Give the customer what he wants, rather than what the factory wants him to have. Before any manufacturing process begins, costly electronic data processing equipment and a huge staff such as this goes to work. That electronic brain automatically flags a problem that might develop in production scheduling or work dispatching. Plant management corrects the situation immediately and prevents a costly crisis for the manufacturer, distributor and machine buyer. This engineering department means a lot to you. That's because a superb new shovel crane may require over 100,000 engineering hours, plus much costly field testing. And thousands of engineering hours are constantly invested in designing refinements for existing machines. And you know that the design of the machine can make a world of difference in its productivity, its service life, maintenance cost, trade-in value, and operator efficiency. The department is decentralized into task forces, each designed to further perfection of present components. But these men are also engineering for the future. The best testimonial for that engineering department has been its impressive output of highly successful new models. As evidence of how they have captured markets, you might like to know that over 2,000 of the 98 series full one-yard machine introduced in 1954 are already in action. There can be no guesswork about the characteristics of the materials that go into a link belt speeder shovel crane. That's why this metallurgical laboratory means so much to the visitor. Here men and instruments work together, checking on the ability of components and materials to withstand the brutal punishment of shovel crane jobs. These methods engineers, sometimes referred to as production engineers, seek new ways to make the product better 
at less cost. They are in constant triple play teamwork with the original design engineers and purchasing, exchanging ideas to improve and coordinate product designs and production methods. Come out with me now to an orderly storage area. Proper organized storage of raw materials and unfinished components is extremely essential to keep pace with modern manufacturing methods. Highly mobile link belt yard cranes stack incoming materials and make systematic withdrawals. Now let's go inside the plant and see metal fabrication get underway. An electronically controlled magic eye is used in cutting steel plate with a light beam traveling along those line patterns. Because the link belt design incorporates many weldments, you would expect to see such methods for cutting steel plate to true patterns quickly and accurately. Major weldments in this plant are fabricated in jigs and fixtures, contributing to uniformity and alignment. Something else, lower and upper frames both are complete individual weldments. The ring gear too is integrally welded to the lower frame. With these many weldments, you would expect use of the latest methods to secure the deepest weld penetration and resistance to strain. Watch this submerged welding operation on a backhoe arm, and you will see these latest techniques in action. These doors open to an oven of intense heat. An average temperature of 1150 degrees Fahrenheit is built up by gas jet flames, which you will see at the side of the oven floor. Here, each critical weldment is stress relieved to eliminate induced stresses in the structure. Inspection follows that stress-relieving operation, which, incidentally, contributes important extra assets in metallurgical quality. Chipping, shot blasting, and grinding parallel continuous inspection. The Magnaflux technique spots any flaw in materials or workmanship at this point. Corrections are made immediately. This automatic operation cuts, chamfers, and deburs bar stock in half the time of prior methods. Such savings are more evidence of why link belt speeder can give you quality without being forced to premium pricing. Proper manufacture of shafting is not a minor function in this plant. Tracer lathes employing a stylus prevent variations on shaft dimensions, assure precisely similar reproductions year after year. Involute splines are used on machinery shafting. Result, shafts can be removed quickly and easily. Production of the popular three-quarter yard rigs, for example, absorbs over 6,000 feet of shafting per year. Our visitors quickly sense that more than a plant is responsible for the growing acceptance of link belt speeder products. Precision manufacturing like this, to almost Swiss watch standards, means that parts become finally finished to eliminate undue wear. They fit together for easy assembly in factory or field. And notice, almost everywhere we turn in this plant, there's inspection, 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 from raw materials to finished product. Modern machine tools such as this also mean extra assets for you. Notice how five drill heads go into action here simultaneously. Consequently, all five mounting holes in that gear will be drilled exactly in the right related spots. And all other such gears will be drilled to the same dimensions, this year, the next, and the next. Accuracy here and in other machining operations means that parts for new machines fit together more securely, with more ease and less chance for future wear. Future service parts, too, if needed, will always have the same dimensions. See that turntable being machined? The conical rollers travel on these circular, smoothly machined pathways, top and bottom, tapered to match the conical rollers. 
Its design tells why link belt rollers and turntables have such long life. Now, here's where gears, drums, jaw clutches, and clutch spiders are broached. This operation cuts accurate internal involute splines so that they accurately match the external splines of the shafts. Purpose? Better distribution of torque loads, easier assembly, easier field replacement if required. See how the powerful hydraulic force draws the broach bar through the gear. A look into this bay tells us that gear making must be a specialty here. Gears, of course, are the vital components that transmit the power needed for the job. Consequently, the gear teeth are machine cut to mesh accurately. Thus, they develop less friction, less power loss, and naturally, they last longer. We will see later how these gear teeth are hardened for even more job endurance. Here you'll see the teeth of a chain drive wheel being cut. And again, inspection, inspection, and more inspection. These machine cut gears are properly hardened and held in perfect alignment due to shafts mounted in line bores. Despite the large population of link belt speeder machines, replacement of gears in the field are practically unheard of. Visitors are usually fascinated by heat treating. Parts are being removed from that oven after having been held at a high temperature. The parts are then quenched in oil and tempered for hardening and strengthening. What we now see is something far more advanced in heat treating, a technique developed for a link belt speeder by the manufacturer. Heat is uniformly induced over a controlled area by an electrical tool which scans the surfaces of each gear tooth. In the link belt speeder plant, this technique obsoletes a hardening method which required manual control of a torch that may produce variations in hardness. This automatic process guarantees a uniform hardness pattern. Why harden the gear teeth? Well, to prevent undue surface wear. That gear is about to be heated in another type of induction hardening device. See how the gear nestles within the electrical coil, is heated to the proper temperature, and then is quenched in water for hardening. You might like to know why these fixtures have varying colors. The color identifies fixtures used in building a specific model. Just another efficient method of eliminating identification problems. One model, for example, required about 200 fixtures, an investment approaching a half million dollars. This helps underscore why financial strength is so essential. With it, a company is free to be progressive in the design of new shovel frames. Now then, shafting does not have to be sledged into the weldments of a link belt. The big upper and lower weldments are jig line bored so that the shafting bores are in perfect alignment and finished to precision tolerances. And you know this means less wear, no shimming, a lot less chance for in the field misalignment and much easier installation of replacement parts. Incidentally, Link Belt Speeder is one of the few shovel crane manufacturers who line bore for perfect alignment of the horizontal travel shaft. A companion asset comes from a design principle that mounts the horizontal travel shaft high in the lower frame to provide maximum ground clearance. Now, come along for another panoramic view to gain an idea of the rather impressive scope of boring bar operations here. Those big fellows which line bore both the upper and lower frames are sturdily set on massive foundations. You can spot the upper frames by their red color and the lowers are painted black. Obviously, unless this factory possessed adequate machine tools of such modern characteristics, shovel cranes of link belt advanced design would wind up at prohibitive prices. Through the years, Link Belt Speeder has invested heavily in modern machine tools, 
that create both cost reduction and quality improvement. Flash your mind out to the field for a moment. As you perhaps know, this control panel earmarks a link belt. That's where the man in command sits, and with simple, easy flicks of the wrist, operates the speedomatic full power hydraulic controls. This type of superior control for shovel cranes was pioneered by Link Belt in 1936. By 1954, it became standard on all Link Belt speeder machines. Owners of over 6,000 speedomatic controlled link belt shovel cranes offer proof in numbers that this control system is important. Well, if speedomatic controls are that important, let's go back to the plant and see the care with which they are made. Visitors are surprised to discover that this manufacturing facility, which makes and assembles the huge parts of a shovel crane, also has the ability to make the relatively small, high-precision components of the famous Speedomatic Power Hydraulic Control System. All but the pumps are made here. Yes, Speedomatic parts are designed, built, and assembled right here in Cedar Rapids. Notice all that precision inspection equipment for quality control? That's another reason why Speedomatic is so foolproof. And of course, there's no substitute for highly skilled personnel to produce such refined controls for trouble-free performance and incidentally for more profits and production for the ultimate user. Our visitors often begin to comment on the size of the plant when they see assembly lines like these and realize that they are but two of four. The one on your left is devoted to the popular 98 series. Men are assigned to certain areas and specific job functions so that they become specialists. Our guests also generally note the lack of confusion and observe the good housekeeping, the flow of material, and the room available for efficiently maneuvering components and assemblies into the final machines. While this man slips that clutch assembly into place, let me tell you briefly about something else that goes for a mighty extra asset for your success. It's something called full function design, a new concept in power flow. There's a separate power train for each machine operation, more standard features, a wider choice of optional features that readily custom tailor the machine to the job. At the same time, this full function design reduces wear and maintenance to an astonishing minimum. Speedomatic full power hydraulics place all these functions under one precise control system. Here, the hook roller brackets are being assembled on the upper frame. Note how easily that shaft slides into the bracket. Those bevel and horizontal deck gears become fully enclosed and operate in a bath of oil. Now the completed upper side housing machinery is being landed on the upper frame. Machine surface to machine surface. 
While the engine is mounted, we can remind ourselves that a link belt speeder delivers more usable horsepower at the drums than other rigs with the same make and model of engine. The travel machinery is neatly enclosed and protected within that husky lower frame. Next, track shoes are installed. Meanwhile, the distinctively designed cab has been fabricated, assembled, and is now receiving its prime coat. The completed upper is now mounted to the lower. While the shoes are painted, the visitor sees that a downdraft of air sucks away the excess paint spray. Finally, of course, the distinguishing trademark must be applied. And now, another 98 series machine is ready to roll into the sunlight. There in the outer yard, it'll be put through its paces for a complete functional test. We should also take a moment to look over one of the other assembly bays. This is where the bigger machines are put together. Also, where final assembly operations are completed on attachments, carriers, and diesel pile hammers. Many of you know that with today's emphasis on the crane boom, it must be designed and built for greater length, more strength, with much less weight. Truck cranes today often must reach 20 stories in height. The patented highlight boom gives you less whipping, twisting, and deflection. And it employs the tetrahedron principle, the most rigid design known for this purpose. This is where butt plates for the boom are milled. The fine tolerances achieved both here and in making the connection holes are important to the user of a long boom. Thus, the boom aligns perfectly. Precision fit of the sections allows transfer of the load through main members of the boom structure. Thus, too, the highlight boom connector pin is free to slip into place quickly and easily. See those carriers being assembled? The capabilities of this plant have been further demonstrated by its ability to make many of its own carriers. This, too, means extra assets because of better integration with the machine mounted on the carrier. These carriers, all engineered by Link Belt, bring their owners a host of extra assets for success. Many people say that today's greatest truck crane values come from this plant. And here is where diesel pile hammers are assembled. This hammer, incidentally, greatly outperforms all other hammers, air, steam, or diesel, of comparable ratings. While you watch that precision machined piston being drawn into place, let me tell you that Link Belt Speeder no longer limits its interest to shovel cranes. It is now also pioneering into new materials handling methods for construction and industrial work. This section of the service building helps us answer those all-important questions on service and replacement parts. Here are efficient storage operations that mean time saved all along the line. These storage methods not only permit fast, systematic withdrawal of parts for new machines, but they also help maintain the system of parts inventory to promptly meet the service needs of veteran machines in the field. You have a complete replacement parts service offered on an overnight 24-hour basis under a proven organizational plan. Here 
is a portion of the large staff and all-inclusive system which keeps permanent records for service parts and that covers engineering and manufacturing records on every machine ever built by link belt speeder and link belt. Thus, when a parts order arrives for an obsolete machine, the part number can be verified against the historical blueprints and parts book for that model. But most important are the people who make up this organization. A first-class manufacturing team is wonderful until retirements thin out the ranks of the skilled veterans who contribute their valued experience and stability. Obviously, behind them are competent replacements trained to fill these highly specialized jobs throughout the plant. And, of course, the manufacturing operations are closely directed by men such as these from a large staff of supervisors and foremen. Today, you need more than just manufacturing talent to be a leader in the field. Communications people mean extra assets to you. These men create a great amount of data, helpful bulletins, buying guides, service materials, and mass communications. Their catalogs, regarded by many as the industry's finest, permit wise buying. Simultaneously, these capable young men are being groomed to ultimately enter the field, thus bringing their knowledge to localized problems and responsibilities on the sales and service fronts. Some of the young men you saw in that communications department help conduct schools like this for distributors and their staffs. In a typical 12-month period, an army of over 1,200 owner and distributor men were benefited in 20 service school sessions throughout the country. Sales and service schools employing continuous examinations and modern educational techniques are constantly held for distributor personnel and machine operators. All newly designed machines and attachments are tested by advanced standards, generally not found in shovel crane development work elsewhere. For example, the effect of these weights on the prototype of a new model is being determined here. Strain gauges are fastened to carefully selected areas. From them, electrical wires lead to a central terminal. And there, the extent of the various loadings is measured scientifically. Notice the numerous points being tested on just one member alone, the boom on this newcomer to the link belt speeder line. Similar electrical checking is conducted in the field under actual job conditions. Thousands of dollars are invested in that mobile engineering test lab which carries this equipment to the proving areas. Before any newly designed machine can appear on the market, it must also do actual work in the field. There too, it must pass the critical judgment of the top management executives from administration, engineering, production, and sales. These men have the responsibility to leave their desks and go to the proving ground or a customer's job site where the equipment is being service tested. They both operate the machine and study its performance to make sure that it is ready for quantity production and deserving of the link belt speeder name. Management men like these direct the dynamic link belt speeder marketing concept, which makes a single team out of administration, research, engineering, finance, sales, service, personnel management, and communications. That policy as we said earlier, adds up to giving the customer what he wants instead of what the factory wants him to have. Leadership in area after area is being won by a continuous progressive program of building the most advanced product in every class. And you'll be glad to know that each new product such as this becomes available only after it has been tested and field proven under methods and policies that are beyond normal industry standards. So it is that the completed machines when leaving this Cedar Rapids plant or its Canadian and overseas counterparts 
become the best ambassadors for the winning of even more acceptance in state after state, province after province, country after country, industry after industry. Acceptance is a valued testimonial, and Link Belt Speeder Corporation works in all these ways to earn it. Perhaps you'll agree that Link Belt Speeder Corporation has demonstrated through its people, policies, plants, and products why it can give you such a great measure of extra assets for your success.